the, <coughs> the parsha of Chuka uh, begins with the Pora uh, Aduma, the red cow, and uh, it introduces it as a chok. Chok meaning uh, there's no rational understanding as to what this is all about. And uh, the, that's the uh, title of the Parsha, Zot Chukat Torah. This is the ultimate chok in the Torah. And uh, Shlomo HaMelech, who was the wisest of all men, so he said, Omarti Echkomo, I thought I would be wise enough to understand it, and it was too far for me. I didn't understand it even. So we know that in the Torah there are laws that are called chukim. But most of the chukim, even though they don't seemingly have a rational explanation, uh, there is some logic, some understanding behind it. <clears throat> but uh, this chok of the poor Aduma that has no ability to fall under rational thought whatsoever. And as the Mephorshim point out, that the poor Aduma was metame tahorim and it was metahir tmeim. One in the same time, those who were tahor, pure, became impure because of contact with it. And those that were impure became pure because they were in contact with it. <laughs> so uh, the, it, le- it leaves almost no room for. Uh, any explanation or understanding as to what happened here. And the Pura Duma was very important because the ashes of the Pura Duma, when it was uh, combined with the water, uh, became the uh, method for purification for Tumas Mace, for the Tuma which comes because of uh, human mortality the contact with the dead and the only way to purify was through the ashes of the poor Aduma and uh, that's why uh, since we don't have a poor Aduma so all of us are regarded as being uh, Tome in terms of the ritual of the Torah and uh, the uh, <coughs> So uh, the Gemara says that there only were a number of uh, red cows in all of Jewish history. There's one opinion in Chazal that there only were two in the entire time of the Bayes Rishon. So either they used uh, the ashes very sparingly or somehow uh, miraculously they remained in abundance but we're talking about a period of 800 years. There undoubtedly was a lot of tuma that had to be uh, taken care of. And this was a period when people brought the korbonos and came to the Beit HaMikdash and therefore had to be purified. But there's a deeper understanding in this week's parsha also, I think, about chukim. This week's parsha, we see that Moshe Rabbeinu uh, is uh, it's decreed upon him that he will not uh, lead the Jewish people into the land of Israel. And uh, the Torah gives a reason. Yan lo emantem bi lehagdisheni, because by memeriva you didn't make the Kiddush Hashem that could have been made, so therefore. So if we think about that rationally, it uh, doesn't seem to hold up. 
What was his crime? He hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. We're talking about the Moshe Rabbeinu, 40 years of service to the Jewish people and God. Moshe Rabbeinu brings the Torah down from Sinai. Moshe Rabbeinu, Lechol HaYoda, Chazoko, Lehosos, Vahamovsim. Everything that he accomplished, what did the world do? What, what, what's the reason for this? And the Torah does not expand on it. In the Medrash, they discuss it. And over uh, the centuries, very uh, many different uh, theories have been advanced. It's not really a punishment of Moshe, it's just that Moshe no longer fit the next generation. The next generation wouldn't appreciate Moshe. It's Dor Dor Vidor Shov, Dor Dor Vechachomov. It wasn't time, it, 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 wasn't, it wouldn't work with Moshe. But that's not what the Torah said. The Torah said explicitly, Yan lo hamantem bi lahagdisheni. You didn't believe in me. So, uh, in a broader sense, we can say that this is also the ultimate chok. How heaven deals with people is completely not understandable to us. That's the problem that the Book of Eov raises, the Tzadik Viralo, Rosha Vitovlo. Righteous people suffer in this world, evil people prosper. How does that work? The Torah doesn't answer it. In the Book of Eov, we see that, uh, so to speak, uh, God's answer is a complete non sequitur. He doesn't discuss the problem. He just says, uh, well, you weren't there when I created the world. You weren't there when all of nature was put into motion. You don't understand how the whole thing works, so uh, you have to deal with what is. But that's not an answer. It's not a, uh, an explanation as to anything. And we have uh, an idea that Chazal uh, mentioned many times that HaKadosh Baruch Hu medagdeik b'tzadikim kuchut asara and when it comes to righteous people then the Lord is exacting. He doesn't uh, allow anything to pass. And he deals with uh, ordinary people so uh, a lot of times things pass. No retribution, so to speak. So again, logically, we would we would say just the opposite. If we're talking about sadiqin, about righteous people, so that if anybody should get a pass in this world, they should. If anybody's uh, missteps should be overlooked, it should be theirs. Because they're the righteous people, they're the tzaddikim. So why should a Shalom be medag de kachut asara? Why should he uh, be so exacting? So Chazal, in uh, asking the question, in posing the question, uh, point out that this is uh, the ultimate chok. The poor Aduma is a chok, but it's not the ultimate chok. The ultimate chok is this, how does the world work? How is righteousness rewarded? And how is evil punished? The whole concept of the Torah is based upon scharv onish. That, sometimes, that somehow there is a reward and sometime, somehow there is retribution. And it's all hidden from us. So those chukas Torah, that's why the Torah said, Yan lo hermantem bi. 
the only uh, remedy, so to speak, the only thing a person can hang on to is emuna. It's faith. And faith is not rational. And faith has no explanation. So uh, the famous uh, word of uh, this Kotzker, it's also Yosher, it's also Emuno. It's only does Yosher. We don't see it. We don't see the Yosher. So the Atsoso, the only eights for it is Emuno. And that's why it says, Sadiq Bemuno so Yichye. So when the uh, you know, Talmud asks the question, what main belief or posseg in the Torah should a person have? If we, if we can sum it up in one sentence, what do you say? So the Gemara says, Sadiq Bemunoso Yichya. That we have to live on faith. We have to live on somehow the belief in what we don't understand and not necessarily only in what we do understand. And uh, this is always a, uh, a testing point of people and the testing point of the Jewish people generally. And we could say the testing point of civilization generally. Because the world is a mess. It's always a mess. It didn't just start now. It's not that, you know, now you have problems. Now we have countries that are rogue. And now we have uh, all sorts of difficulties. It's that way uh, from time immemorial. And therefore, the only response that, uh, that allows uh, progress uh, to occur that allows us to move past the problem is not so so emuno, to have faith that somehow there is a plan and there is a guide and that we have to do ours and if the Rabboni Shalom gave us mitzvahs he gave us commandments, he gave us chukim so even if we don't understand it but we have to perform them and the truth of the matter is that it's true in life generally. And people uh, uh, in, in every respect of life, you go to a professional, uh, you know, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't ask uh, how, what, where, uh, you only want to hear what, what, is, what the result is. What does he say? What, what is the diagnosis, what is the advice? You don't ask him what mark he got in 10th grade. And because of that, therefore, there is within us a reservoir of faith that we do believe. But we have to be able to extend that to how we live our lives and how we view what goes on in life and to accept that there are chukim, and that once there are chukim, uh, then we may not understand everything, but we certainly have to relate to it in terms of the chukim themselves. Rabbi Hanan Yaman Akash, Omer Rotsa, Kodri Borchu, Mazako, Sushi, Sarah, Kodri Borchu, 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 Kodri